You might remember last year in around October, I think it was, the motorcycling world really has just turned to shit. Fires everywhere in most of southeastern Australia. And that meant we were stayed at home. We weren't even going for our annual snowy ride because everywhere we wanted to go was burnt to a crisp. Things were looking up in March, but then along came Corona. Never rains, but it pours, does it? So March, April, May, June, July, starting to climb the walls, I think, by then. So we decided to plan something a bit audacious. To start with, we'll go up through the Hunter Valley on some fairly familiar roads, stopping at Nundal, and then following a whole lot of dirt roads, some familiar and some not, all the way up to a little town called uh, Kentucky. And from there, we'll head over to Bruce and John Taylor's property called Terrible Vale, an amazing name, isn't it? It's a sheep property and they've got shearers quarters. That's where we're going to stay on our first night. The next day, John and Bruce are going to take us on a bit of a tour in the local area. There's nothing better, of course, than having people who know the roads and can find really interesting things. So we're looking forward to that. We'll head off on day three down to the coast via the Kempsey Road through a little town which is really just a pub and a couple of houses called Bellbrook. Then we'll go past the pub with no beer at Taylor's Arms onto Barrowville to our campsite at Corindy, which is just north of Coffs. On day four, we'll turn left onto the old Glenness Road just outside of Grafton. That runs parallel to the Nimboida River, passing washed out old bridges and we'll squeeze through a hand-hewn tunnel, which is quite a tourist attraction on that road. To reach the New England Plateau again, we'll go up on a dirt road through a lot of the countryside that was burnt in the Black Summer fires. Once we get up there and hit the Gwider Highway, we'll come back down to Grafton. Uh, I believe that there are lots and lots of nice twisties on that road. Day five of the moving day again, and we're going to start off by doing a little bit of bush bashing or almost bush bashing through state forest just north of Woolgulga and then through McLean for a two night camp at a place called Flat Rock which is just south of Lennox Head or just north of Ballina whichever way you want to look at it. Of course it's not possible to spend any time on the far north coast of New South Wales without taking a trip through the hinterland west of Byron Bay and visiting the psychedelic town of Nimbin. So that's the plan for day six. Day seven, we'll see us head inland through Tenterfield towards Lightning Ridge. Now, looking at that part of the trip, the chances are that we'll be riding into the sun with lots of kangaroos jumping around all over the place. So we may not make it to Lightning Ridge and we've got a few likely looking camping spots along the New South Wales Queensland border. When we're doing this, of course, the border will be closed. So we'll have to be very careful not to inadvertently stray into Banana Bender territory. On day eight, we'll be heading south again towards home, our aim to reach Coonabarabran for the night. We'll head through the Mount Kaputar National Park and the Pilliga. I've never been through the Pilliga, I'm really looking forward to that. On our second to last day, we'll cut through the Warren Bungles National Park and amble along the Burundong Way to spend the night in Orange. Day 10. Should be pretty straightforward. We'll head home via Bathurst and Lithgow. But with Alan planning the route, you never know where you'll end up. I'm sure it'll be interesting. 